So Lisa, I want to look at Ponzi schemes now. And of course, we've all heard of the famous examples, or should I say the infamous examples, but how can people and organizations spot the Ponzi schemes as are perhaps more under the radar? Great question in the wake of the Madoff super Ponzi that we've all heard probably more than we'd like to hear about. There are a few things that can be done at the front end. You've got to be careful when you hire people that you do due diligence. Don't just take on anyone. They may look a good game, they may talk a good game. Make sure you know exactly who you are doing business with. Here, of course, one of the problems that's well reported is that you had a regulator who wasn't really switched on to what some of the issues were. So the regulator has been reported to have acted in silos, not joining up their information. What's the takeaway from that? Law enforcement, regulators need to work together need to share information. Well, looking at the sort of smaller Ponzi schemes, and often they have really solid fronts and they look like legitimate companies, how can the layman spot this sort of thing? Is there a checklist that things you should really watch out for? The big organizations get behind some of these folks and make it look like everything's kosher. So for example, we know from what's been reported, Madoff dealing with a particular bank, that has the imprimatur of, well, great, if that bank loves him, why shouldn't I? Let's make sure we really do our own research before we part with even one hard-earned pence. Who are we dealing with? What is their track record? Who is auditing their books? I mean, if you've got what looks like a massive company with a huge balance sheet being audited by one man and a dog off in a tower in, in Nisden, maybe you ought to think, long and hard about whether that's a company that's really wanting transparency, correct oversight. So let's look at what sorts of controls that company has in place, who they have looking at what they're doing, and what their track record is, down to even looking at the backgrounds of the chief individuals who you're going to be parting with your money with. Make sure those people don't have criminal records. Make sure those people can close a deal not just with their brother or sister, but that they've got real experience behind them, that they've been able to deliver returns to others. So there's a lot of legwork you can do at the front end to make sure you're dealing with a legitimate company. So should an individual or indeed a company find that they are or think, suspect they're invested in a Ponzi scheme, what should they do? So if you're sitting in your chair at fill in the blank bank and you see something that looks suspicious, you're in the regulated sector, it's your job to flag it up to your local financial investigative unit. And that unit is meant to do research and hold in abeyance any sort of transaction until it's been found to be clear and good to go. So it's a duty, not just a nice to have. So finally, if you are caught up in one of these schemes, what's the likelihood of you getting your money back? Oftentimes, the criminals are quite, quite clever about squirreling away the money. The money goes offshore never to be seen again. The money goes into the wife or husband or children's name. What are your chances? Your chances are better if you've got really unified government actors working together to make sure that they ferret out funds, that they're able to trace funds. Remember, as, as the criminals have gotten sophisticated, the governments have as well. They do work together. There's an awful lot of cross-jurisdictional work, MOUs, agreements, instruments where countries work together. So it's not as easy as it once was to make sure you're owning an island in some country and that nobody finds out about it. Our money laundering rules and the way we work together as governments now have moved a little bit toward getting those last, you know, your pence back to you. Is it perfect? No. Are you going to get 100 cents on the dollar? Maybe not. but. I think we've seen in the aftermath of the Madoff case, people are getting money back. It's not a complete black hole. So let's hope that, that, that you wouldn't be completely out of pocket.